Hi everyone. We're going to do this theorem with only the basic rules. Uh, I, I sort of suggested in class a little bit on how to do this one, so we're actually just going to try and finish it up. So this question is not too bad. It's all about the structure. So this is a theorem, so unfortunately, yes, I have to do all this writing just to get the first line. So there's this x negation ax or gx, and for all y, negation by arrow hy, double close bracket, therefore there exists x hx by conditional ax. Okay, so staring at this, I just have to work hard to identify the main connective. This and binds this with this, the conditional binds this with everything, so the main connective is a conditional. Um, if that's the case, I know to assume CD. So I get there exists X, not AX or GX, and for all Y, not bracket BY, arrow HY. Now I'm going to uh, show the consequent, but I might as well actually just simplify this right now before I forget. Um, doing the automatic moves first is always a fine thing, so long as you actually remember to uh, continue your derivation afterwards. That's to simplify. So I have for all y negation b y arrow h y. And that's to simplify. Now at this point I could write show of the consequent, which is a, this thing over here, the existential, but I'm not going to. I always remember in predicate derivations it's so important to uh, EI first, UI to match, and you EI the second you can. So I'm going to EI right now. I could have done it on line four, but it's not that big of a deal. And I will EI this immediately to AI or GI. Why am I using I? Because when you existentially instantiate, you must pick a new letter, something that's never appeared in your proof. So I use IJK. So that is line three EI. Now I'm ready to actually finally show what it is that I want. And I want to show there exists an x bracket hx by conditional ax. OK, fine. Now, I'm actually not going to worry too much about the AID here, because I don't have quantifier negation, so I don't think it's going to help me much. Uh, I can put it in if I wanted to. I'm just lazy. So I have to show this. Now, I just have to remember on the side that if I want to show there exists x bracket hx by conditional ax, what I really just need to show is some instantiation of this, where the letters are the same. Now, the thing is, how do I pick alpha? Well, if I had actually tried to write it here, I would have just took a stab in the dark at what alpha is. Here, I have choice. Whenever I have choice, I want to actually do it later when I actually figure out what I want. So now, it's actually sort of might be a bit clear that what I actually want alpha to be is i, because this a alpha, where alpha can be anything, I might as well make it I, so at least I can use AI here. And that is sort of a good guidance. Now, of course, if I want the biconditional, what I really need to show is both ways. So this actually informs my order of operations. This is how it would go. So I'm actually going to go and do this and then go backwards to get what I want. So what I really want then is to show h i arrow a i again how did i know it was i because i used the fact that i e i'd first for guidance on what letter to pick so five and four are important lines now i can say h i nine show sorry i missed a couple codes here a c d a c d show a i ten not a i that's a i d now from here i just have to figure out what to do well i have line four which is a ui it's a, sorry it's a universal so i can ui to anything i want so i might as well ui to i why because i want to match this h i and this h y together so i'll ui and i get not bracket b y arrow h y and that's line four ui Okay, at this stage, it doesn't actually look like I can do much. I have HI, not AI, and I have this line here and this line here. So this is actually sort of annoying. Uh, it doesn't seem I can do much at all, and I have no premises to look at. So I just basically have to become unstuck here. Now, I don't have anything I can sort of do other than use line 5 and line 11, or line of 11, I should say, to build a contradiction. So that's exactly what I'll do. I'm just using my basic skills. If I have not BY arrow HY, wow. Sorry, I made a mistake. 
These are I's. I said I U I'd to I, but I wrote Y. So if I have not bi arrow hi, well then clearly I can actually build bi arrow hi because this negation is really just a contradiction generator. So I'll just show bi arrow hi because that's how I build it. I will assume cd, and then what I really need is to show hi. But I don't need to write anything. It's right there. So I'm just going to say hi, that's line 8, repeat conditional derivation. That's what that is. And then now, line 11 and 12 contradict. And I've shown ai. I've got to zoom out again here. Shoot, sorry. So now I can say that on 11 and 12, I have achieved an ID. That's how I showed AI. And of course, that was the consequent. So now I can successfully say on line 9, I showed the consequent. I did a conditional derivation. Done. So if I'm looking at my little checklist here, my checklist says that I had to show this, which I've now done. Now I just need to show the other way. Show AI arrow HI. 18, AI, 19, show, HI, 20, not HI. So this is assume CD, assume ID. Okay. So now what? Well, on line 21, I again just look at the same thing. I have AI, not HI. Is there any way I can use line 4 or 5 as contradiction generators? And yes, there's an easy one right here. 5 is the negation of a disjunction. To build a disjunction, I would just need one of them. Do I have AI? I do. So on 21, I add to AI GI. That is 18 add. And then I'll just repeat my contradiction line which is line five, repeat, 21 ID. Okay, now I know if you're paying attention, you'll realize I have a lot of useless extra show lines and stuff like that, but I really don't care. It doesn't actually lengthen the time of my proof much at all, and it just makes me sort of happy to do these things. So 19 conditional derivation. I have now done this. Why did I want these two? So I could combine them. So now I can get H I by conditional AI, and that is line 7, 17, conditional to biconditional. Why did I want this? Because now I can move up and get the existential, and the existential is right here. I generalize to there exists x bracket hx for biconditional ax. And that is 24 existential generalization direct derivation. Boom, boom. Whoops, bad line, whatever. Okay, now I still have to finish the rest of my proof by closing things out. I've just shown this, so I have to go back. Oh, it's actually only one line. Boom. Down. Down. And what is this? This is the consequent. Sorry. Six is the consequent of my one show line. So I just have to say six conditional derivation, and the proof is over. Okay, so just some observations about this. The most likely place where people are going to mess up is right at the top. They're, I'm assuming you can break down this theorem properly, realize it's an ACD, and that even that you can simplify. Where people are going to mess up is in the EI. The problem is that lots of people are going to take this line here, and they're actually going to not do it till much later. Or they're going to actually just EI to X or something like that, which is against the rules. You must do it as fast as you can. The reason why is because only doing it quickly will you know that you're supposed to show H, I, and A, I. That's the trick. Otherwise, some students will actually write something like show H, X, arrow, A, X here. And because they're just like, oh, I don't know, I have to show some instantiation, why not just make it X? But the problem is, if you make it X and then you EI later, you will end up EIing to I, and you will actually be unable to show this. So as an exercise, you can see what happens if you EI later on, and you'll realize you cannot complete the proof. If you do complete the proof, you've done something wrong. You've cheated. So keep this in mind. All that this demonstrates 
is this a nice demonstration of the basic rules in action and how they apply to predicate, how they inform our strategy, but it adds in the golden rule. EI as quick as you can, immediately, and then you UI to match. Everything matches after you fixed a variable. Okay, that's a basic rules example. I will continue to do more basic rules examples with things like UD and stuff like that in it, but still, this was a pretty good one. Good luck.